zu ASMR. Cheers. Today is going to be a quick, effective, fun little lecture. Because it is a lecture. <laughs> um, about why you should always try to control the center of the chest bone. And to illustrate that point, we have a beautiful miniature game provided by Alexander Eljechen with the white pieces against a guy called Levenfish with the black pieces. Levenfish was a great player. He has an opening named after him. But Eljechen was a legendary chess player. The game was played in 1912 in a tournament in St. Petersburg. Aljechen was Russian and he had an absolutely incredible, fascinating life. Um, he was a very, very wealthy aristocrat and he was a young man at this point. But um, if you know a little bit about history, you know that not too soon after 1912, Russia became a hostile environment to very wealthy aristocrats. So he had to flee. He fled to France. He was all over the place. And he actually became world champion later. Eliechen. He was an amazing, amazing player. And here he is to give a masterclass on why we should always control the center. Why we must always strive to battle for the center. And poor Levin Fish will show what happens if we don't. So, Eliechen opened with d4. And we saw c5 in response. This is called the old Benoni. Back then it wasn't old, it was just the, the Benoni. Um, and d5 by Liechen. This is theory. Knight f6, knight c3. So with the c5 move here, um, we can see that black is allowing a strong pawn in the center here. And a pawn like that can be tolerated as a part of a, a short-term plan where we'll tolerate it for some moves and then we will round it up and exchange it off. Um, if we don't manage to do that, uh, it can be a very big problem for us. Um, and maybe Lemon Fish was not really aware of just how big of a problem that could become. For now he stopped the pawn from advancing further with d6, also taking control of e5. And we see e4 by Liechen. So you can see he is really fighting for the sender. He's occupying the sender with pawns, which is number one. And number two is he's defending that sender with pieces. And uh, he does more than that later. Let's take a look. We see g6. And I don't want you to think that a move like this one, like g6, that that kind of move is necessarily a bad move. In this position it is still fine, but your spidey sense should be tinkling a little bit. You must understand that you can play some flank moves. You could, for instance, think get over this bishop. It can be really good, even. But you must understand that in unison with this, you must also challenge the center. You can't only play on the flank without destabilizing or doing something about the center. 
Um, and that is what Levin Fish fails to do in this game. And we will see exactly how deadly that can be and how fast it can really go. So Eliechen plays f4. So this is not exactly subtle. Now this pawn can advance, being protected. And we are just taking a lot of space in black's side of the board. And we see knight on b to d7, which is, you know, it's looking at it's looking at e5, so it's okay. It's sort of saying, okay, I, I won't want to I want to keep you away. Don't advance too much into my house. But uh, the very natural move, knight f3, also looking at e5. And the theme should be quite clear. But maybe it wasn't completely clear to Levenfish when this position played a6. So this stops potential bishop moves, potential knight jumps. But uh, you see, it's a flank move, like this flank move. And these two flank moves, while innocent and positionally good in themselves, they are not really addressing what Eliechen is building here in the center. And uh, yeah, a guy like Eliechen, if we are going to make more videos about this guy and his games, you will know that uh, he is not like Karpov or Capablanca, who is satisfied with like a small positional advantage. He goes for the initiative, he grabs it, he throws everything at you, and he wins. And his understanding of dynamics in chess and his understanding of the power of having the initiative is... Um, is phenomenal, it's legendary. Kasparov credits him as a very, very big inspiration in his chess. And now, of course, we can see a move like e5. a6 did nothing to stop that. It can be captured, sure. Should we make sure to make the good ASMR sound here? that. Problem is here, we can't capture. It's backed up by the knight. And if you look at this position here, these two knights protecting these two pawns way up on the board. How would an opening normally look? Well, the pawns would be here. Now they are here still protected by the knights. So this thing that's going on here, that is, uh, it's becoming a serious problem very fast. This move didn't challenge the center. This move didn't challenge the center. This move didn't challenge the center. That's too many moves. That's not challenging the center. This knight is attacked, it has to move. And we just see e6, attacking the knight, attacking the, the f7 pawn. And even though um, Eliechen hasn't developed that many pieces on paper, he has a absolutely crushing advantage here. And why is that? Well, it's because these two pawns are just cramping black so much and they are providing a wedge into black's position so even though these bishops are not completely in the game yet they can in one move come to an extremely active square where they're not being challenged because white is controlling the center and thereby therefore controlling the game knight is attacked Okay, we move the knight. Now, would you capture here? 
I guess a lot of you guys would go and capture here. Maybe I would even do it myself if I hadn't analyzed this game. But first of all, the knight can recapture. Second of all, the king can actually recapture. And uh, yes, it does lose castling rights, but it's not necessarily fatal. And thirdly, and this is really the point, and maybe even the point of this entire video, is you want to get paying for your buck. Don't relinquish, don't let go of the of the stranglehold you have on your opponent unless you have a really good reason. Because this pawn is really, really good. So if you capture here and allow it to be recaptured, you are trading away one of your most valuable pieces. Even though it's just a pawn, it's like 10 times the worth of this pawn or this pawn. Do you understand? So don't trade this away unless you really have something in mind and you know where you're going with it. So instead, Eliechen played bishop f4, saying, okay, I can attack you once, I can attack you twice, I'm going to just capture you if you don't do something. And there is only really one way to try to get out of it, and it is by capturing here. And here uh, Eliechen made a quite interesting decision that the modern chess computer, the silicon behemoth monster, disagrees with. Because uh, the natural queen takes f3 is, according to Stockfish, the best move. It's also what I would have played, I think because it just looks so natural. Um, this game was played over a hundred years ago. And this was while Eichen was a young, was a young man also. So we must not be too harsh and expect the sort of Magnus Carlsen era perfect play. Um, there is something, there is a romantic touch to the move that, uh, Eliechen played here, he played uh, g takes. And the point is that this threatens the knight. The queen would also have threatened the knight, but then we could have protected the knight, and the queen couldn't have taken, but it doesn't matter protecting the knight against the pawn, we will just capture anyways. So the knight has to move again. And Eliechen is, is very happy with this, the reason he did it and is because he's maintaining all these pieces. I mean, look at these guys. This knight protecting the base of the pawn chain along with the queen. This samurai bishop just slicing. Look at that. Slicing into black's position. This king is just looking at the walls of his castle and there is just no escape. This pawn is so strong. And... Um, and it's white to move again. So with capturing with the pawn and forcing black to move back here, uh, Eliechen kept the initiative and the more Eliechen games we will, uh, we will see, the more we'll understand that initiative was something that he really, really appreciated. And by the way, if you are uh, confused about my pronunciation, Eliechen, it's because it's kind of close to how a Russian would say it. Uh, the uh, English pronunciation of his name is Alekine. So if you hear Alekine, that's what most people think I, I say, I think. Uh, but I like Eliechen. Anyways, we see uh, Bishop C4. And like these moves are it's just 101 control the center this bishop it's in the center along with this bishop they're just they're just attacking all these center squares sort of the center is just the center wedge has just been pushed all the way up in the king's face and 
at this point there's not much you can do about it really there are some serious problems here because with this bishop c4 there is a threat of like takes takes and then discover check by moving the pawn and checking with the bishop big problem so that's why after bishop c4 we see black capturing like that and then a recapture and in this position there is a possibility of a queen trade and i think i mean it's playing against aliechen even if i did the queen trade i would still lose but if you find yourself in this position where you are really really cramped like your pieces are all the way back here you're defending i would go for the queen trade because it's just harder for black to, uh, for white to checkmate you <laughs> without the queen and the more pieces you trade off the less cramped you become the attacking pieces are generally worth more than your defending pieces so it's a good idea to trade off in this uh, situation still i mean that would be huge problems because if we take the queen rook recaptures and it's like uh, it's, it's a big problem but uh, lemon fish tried for a counter attack with queen b6 attacking b2 and here is why this game is kind of famous uh, and this is also like one of these games where Eliechen was a sort of fairly well-known chess player at this point but this is one of these games that got printed in books and then a lot of newspapers and players around Europe started to notice okay this guy's dangerous this guy he's got ideas you know because queen b6 says okay i'll get counter play i'm now threatening to capture on uh, on b2 and aliechen played queen to e2 on the face of it just making queen takes b2 much better because now when the queen has moved it's no longer protecting the rook so the rook can be taken and also it's a fork because the knight is also under attack so what is the point of that why would you make something that would just be capturing a pawn attacking one piece why would you make that into capturing a pawn and attacking two pieces the reason you would do that and it is you know the stockfish also says this is the best move it's not you know completely speculative it is the best move it's winning um and Eliechen found that he calculated all the way to the end and even though it gives up a lot of material here it wins the point is that this queen cooperates with this bishop creating a battery allowing in this position the fancy knight to b5 right so that is a double rook sacrifice with check and it wins by force it's a little bit like the immortal game i have a video on it maybe i can put a card somewhere up here i don't know <laughs> how that works i'll try uh i have a video on it the immortal game by adolf anderson where he also against Kishertsky, where he also does a similar kind of double rook sacrifice so uh lemon fish accepts check it looks good right because now it's check so there's no counter chip you know you, you have to move the king the king goes here not not going to the center the queen needs these center files to use like this because this is what the game is about you know you can play g6 you can play a6 and you can take these pieces on the edge of the board that's not where the battle is happening guys <laughs> it, the battle is happening here in the center we're looking at this guy the king all right now, the queen is attacked also well, living fish was just like yeah i'll capture that that's 10 points of material right there 5 plus 5 10 points 
Awesome. Well. 9c7 check. Can't go here. Can't go here. Can't capture the knight. Only one legal move. Yeah, king could fall over. But, uh, yeah. King e8. King d8. And, um... Are you threatening the knight? No. Center bishop protecting the knight. So the king doesn't really have any moves. We check. Queen d2. Well, it's not the only winning move, but according to Stockfish, it is the move that wins fastest. So he was quite precise when he wanted to Aliakin. Now, the move that staves off checkmate the longest and what Levenfish played played was um, bishop d7. And now it's fine to use this pawn to capture here. Okay, now we are so close to checkmate and we have a tactical justification to give up a little bit of our choke hold here. On, uh, on black and the reason the reason is that now uh, in this position knight to e6 would actually be checkmate pretty cool looking checkmate pawn is protected by the queen pawn attacks here and here king can go there and uh, the knight and also the bishop attacks c7 so that's checkmate and Levin Fish uh, resigned here, but uh, I can show you the checkmate. Um, if you want to be like really pedantic about it, it's a checkmate in a bit more moves that I'm going to show you because you can play ridiculous moves like you can start by playing this queen check and then king takes and then you start the defense just to, you know, stave it off for one more move, but I think that sort of messes with the aesthetic of the checkmate and it's not relevant. So I'll just show sort of uh, the, the checkmating pattern going on here. We have to stop this being checkmate. The only way we can do that, the only move, is to move this pawn. So we give ourselves an escape square. The best move is to put the pawn here, because now the knight is no longer uh, defended. We are attacking the bishop. I mean, the bishop could in principle take, but uh, it's faster for white to checkmate with knight e6. And we turn the knight to look at the king and say, check to his majesty. There is exactly one legal move. It is king to e7. Now we make a new queen or maybe we should just make a bishop because it doesn't matter in this position it's uh, if we make a queen or make a bishop the uh, result is exactly the same rook takes queen takes check and uh, King C, King F7. Now Knight takes F8. That's check. Hello, but it's not the Knight. It's not the Knight saying check. It's a discovered check. It's the Bishop now. You see when I move the Knight, the Bishop checks. There is a legal move. King G7. Can you find the check? quite simple queen to e7 check mate king can go here bishop can go here bishop can take queen that's it that, that's the game and that is why i want you to always fight for the center Take it if you can, 
use it as a base of an attack. If they are trying to take it from you, fight for it, either directly or by playing flank openings, but flank openings that destabilize the center, that attack the center. Don't allow them to have it for free like Levin Fish did. And that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. I really do. I really do hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Bye.